Uh, okay, moving on. So 11.30 Central. Nicole, VP Marketing of uh, Tackle.io. Nicole, please join me. Hello. Hi. Great to be here, Pete. Thank you for having me. Hello. And uh, it's actually Pep, not Pete. Pep. Sorry about that, Pep. <laughs> no worries. I was wondering about your middle name, or is it the second, first, last name? Vojno or? Yeah, it's, that's really close. It's Voino, um, my maiden right. name. Voino. So is that Polish or Czech? Or? It's Polish, yes. Mm, all right. Wonderful. So tell me about your last year. How, how was it at Tackle? Um, lots of change. You know, I think like a lot of, you know, go-to-market leaders went through, we lots of uh, challenges last year, lots of ups and downs, but I think lots of learnings we had and on a really good path as we set up for 2024 and lots of, lots of things we're going to do differently this year. Okay. Well, looking forward to hearing what are your top three things you're, you're betting on and then uh, we'll chat later. Okay. Yeah. So as I really thought about this year of like, what are the top three big bets we're making and talk to my team about this, um, the three I really wanted to highlight, um, the first is own media. So we're really making a big investment here of leaning on own media as one of the key pillars of our digital marketing strategy. And as I really think about own media, um, I'm thinking about this as the marketing channels that we really have complete control over. So like our website, our blog, um, email newsletter, and you can even think of this as like events of yours that you own yourself to. And we're using Audience Plus for this to create more of a, I call it like the Netflix-like experience for our content. So we'll be creating a lot of premium content streams for this that um, our audience can subscribe to. And we're doing this because we really want to become our own channel for distribution to our audience and not have to rely on these rented land tactics like um, uh, SEM and paid social that algorithms are constantly changing and continue to change. Um, paid media is always become, also becoming like really inefficient in a lot of ways. So with this, we're really hoping to see a few things. Um, we want to become more cost efficient here. We don't want to have to keep paying a ton to distribute our content and get in front of the right eyeballs. We also want to see like better ROI. Um, the engagement data that we can collect here is first party. So you can attribute that to the, val the value of engagement to the content and directly tie this to revenue. And I think anytime we can show like how content is impacting revenue, that's like the holy grail for marketers and it's something you're going to get really excited about to be, you know, tying all that together. And then I think, you know, this is really an opportunity to build more trust and credibility. Um, we've always been really focused on producing really valuable content, like people come to us for what we produce and it creates like these really meaningful connections and it lets us continue building like our brand and our thought leadership in the space. And by really investing more here in that, it's just a bigger opportunity. And then as we thought about like, how do we measure this? Um, it's, you know, a lot of like, what's the site traffic? What are the page views? But then looking at the subscribers that are going to be subscribing to this, um, we're often going to be looking at engagement data, particularly like at target accounts, who's looking at this as well. And then the conversions at different points in the funnel, like what content are people looking at at different stages? And then ultimately, at the end of the day, being able to tie this back to revenue um, is a huge one. And then the second trend um, that we're going to double down on and go to market is events. And I kind of just caught the end of Casey's and heard her talking a little bit about events. But for us, you know, this really isn't about going to a trade show and scanning all the leads we can at a booth. It's really about quality and being able to put on really unique experiences for our in-market prospects and customers. We have a really heavy ABM approach at Tackle, and events have really proven highly successful for us in terms of pipeline acceleration and customer expansion and retention. So we're leaning more into like virtual event experiences um, for small groups, like maybe it's 15 to 20 people. So you can do things like whether it's a cooking class with a famous chef or a rare bourbon tasting, those things stand out. Um, you know, I don't think people really like wanna go to a lunch and learn necessarily anymore. If you're going to do something in person, I think it's great to get a group of like C-level peers together. Um, if you're going to do a high-end dinner, send them like an Uber code or something. Make it really easy for them to get there or do a small wine tasting. Um, if you're at a conference and trying to get people to do something, 
do you make it different and stand out? Do you like a morning yoga session um, for your target group of accounts? And then, you know, something that's really successful that we've done before too is um, at one of the largest industry conferences we go to, we rent out a restaurant space um, where we host meetings over the course of three days. So we have food and drinks available um, at all times of the day. You don't have to eat those like awful box sandwiches that are available at the conferences or stand in line for like 45 minutes to get a table somewhere. It's a very easy location to get to. And then you're getting FaceTime with tackle executives and something like that. It's almost like you don't really think of that at an event, but it's almost like an event inside of the event. And having those one on one meetings um, has been very successful for us as well. So doubling down on things like that. And I would call out kind of like a pro tip here is that I hear so many times that people tell me like, oh, small virtual events don't work for us or in person events don't work or even like going to trade shows don't work. And what I find is that I think a lot of times like people are just not very organized with this. Like maybe they don't communicate consistently beforehand to attendees. Um, so a no show rate will be high or there's a lot of like pitching at the event and no one ever wants to sit at a dinner and just get sold to all night. You know, instead have your customers do the talking for you. Or sometimes like you're not getting the right people to the events, whether it's from the vendor side or the attendee side. You know, if you're going to have a CMO dinner, have all CMOs there. Don't have a mix of like CMOs and marketing managers. So just things like that. And we always measure this by, you know, is there a faster time to close, an early renewal, or even like a larger expansion if they attend the event and tying it back to things like that. And then the third go-to-market bet we're making is really around customer marketing. We're shifting a lot more budget um, from that new logo side towards cu the customer side. And, you know, it's proven that customers, you know, they've already seen value in Tackle and it's more cost efficient as everyone knows to retain an existing customer than acquire new ones. And I think there's been a huge trend, you know, the last year, two years to be more, um, you know, do more with less. And that's impacted a lot of customer facing teams in SaaS. And we've gone really away from like servicing customers as we've moved towards more automation here. So I think everything marketing teams can do to give customers a more like personalized experience is really important. Whether it's things like onboarding nurtures, can you create more personalized content for where they are in their journey? Um, so we're doing service offerings to like really meet them where they need more help. And we're showing customers really relevant messaging and offers across all the different acquisition channels. And even doing, you know, ABM campaigns to them to help understand intent from different personas that may not have been involved in the initial purchase decision um, around our offerings. And then we really want to be able to like analyze and respond to customer data in real time and see what's resonating on these channels. And that's something we can then leverage um, for new logo campaigns as well. And, you know, Building strong customer relationships at the end of the day is so important. I mean, customers will turn into advocates and this becomes a great form of organic promotion and word of mouth at the end of the day. And so, you know, as we look at this, we really want to measure it with like net revenue retention, what are our MPS scores, and like are we seeing an increase in ARR around any of the services work that we're doing as well. So those are really the big like three go-to-market bets that we're focused on at Tackle this year. A couple of uh, follow-up questions here. Yeah. A lot of uh, marketing leaders that I've been talking to are kind of like giving up on the traditional sponsor booths, you know, at, at mm -hmm. the you know, trade shows, conferences. What, what, what's your take on like sponsoring conference, like booths? Yeah, um, I would prefer like almost not to do it sometimes <laughs> if we don't have to, because I. A lot of times I see that the, you know, we're just getting people coming to the booth because like they want like a little tchotchke or something like that. And the real meaningful conversations, like, you know, especially if you're selling to more of an executive audience are happening like off the floor with those yeah. smaller events or meetings that you have to have. Um, you know, sometimes it's going to be a pay to play. You know, we go to one conference where um, you can't do anything within five miles of the event unless you sponsor and have a trade show booth. Mm -hmm. So you can't really get out of that situation, but I, a lot of times would prefer just to, you know, either do something smaller outside of the event and spend really good money there, do a meaningful experience and partner with yeah. you know, maybe like-minded companies in that aspect. Totally, yeah. 
And what you said about the, you know, like the dinner participants being like, if you do a CMO dinner, make sure there's CMOs. Yeah. It's so important. The other, uh, I think I went to, uh, it was Saster and somebody sold me on, hey, I'm throwing this founder dinner, SAS founders. I'm like, oh, I'm a founder. And I show up and it's like half of VCs and then in a bunch of like, you know, non-founders too. I felt so, you know, like a bait and switch, yeah. you know you know, I've finished my steak and fled. I know yeah. it kind of puts like a bad taste in your mouth. I think about that brand and company going forward um, in situations like that. Yeah, 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 totally. Well, becoming a media company, the thing you said, and, you know, become your own distribution channel. <clears throat> Can you add some more specifics to that? Because I think it's, it's the holy grail. Like we all want that. Mm -hmm. And so how can we make them come to us? For content or rely like we're the channel for news about whatever what are you specifically doing to achieve that yeah so we've always like really focused on building lots of like that top of funnel content and getting people materials that they can't find anywhere else um, in our space and started that like about four years ago and then really realized that there was this you know, people wanted even more of this. So how can we turn this into something that's bigger than that? And so, you know, I think it goes without saying, but like, I think I heard Casey talking about this too and you, um, but like, how do you grab people from social? So like if people are interacting with you and your executive team and even your whole company on social, then I think they're more likely to go to your website and, you know, look at content there, start interacting with your brand. If they, you know, interact with you in an event, then they're going to be like, okay, let me go see what content you're doing there. But, you know, people don't always want content in the same form. Like, yeah, maybe one week they want to read a blog, but the next they're like, I really want to dive, deep dive into this video series, or I actually want to find out a lot more. And I need like this executive buying guide to get my whole, this buying committee on board to figure out how I can go sell this internally. So I think figuring out really like that buying journey, the customer journey and understanding that and putting, figuring out all the formats you need. But like you said, you have to, produce, I think, content that's going to be in a way that's entertaining to people, that's not boring to read, um, and reach them on all these different channels where they are, um, whether it's community, social media, um, just word of mouth, and bring them to your platform so that then they are like ingesting that news. Right on. Yeah. Nicole, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Everybody give uh, Nicole Voino-Smith a follow on LinkedIn and uh, we will see her stuff over there.